previous lesson we talked about uh, the actual logistics of getting crude oil to the um, refineries. And again, keep in mind crude oil itself is not where the value lies. It's once the refiners turned it into various um, refined products um, and also um, uh, petrochemical feedstocks. Here's a picture of a petroleum refining complex down uh, in Port Arthur, Texas, which is, again, part of that huge uh, refining petrochemical corridor along the uh, U.S. Gulf Coast. A map of where the current refineries are located, and this one is shaded in to show the Petroleum uh, Administrative Defense Districts, or the various pads that we discussed in the prior lesson. Uh, just a simple kind of an illustration of how the process uh, might work. You can see these are... Um, seafloor gathering systems for crude oil, uh, bringing crude oil onshore. Um, we, we've got offshore uh, drilling and production platforms there. You can also see some tankers that are offloading uh, more than likely imported crude oil directly to the refineries. The refining process itself, um, these are the types of products that you can extract from a simple barrel of crude oil. You can see gasoline being uh, the largest uh, and then diesel being the second largest uh, percentage, so we have, again, basically the largest component being motor fuels. Now the distillation process, it's uh, the same as distilling anything. Um, you're going to heat up the crude oil, and then naturally there's going to be some vapors and some other moisture, some other condensation, and they're all going to represent uh, products that are derived from, a, uh, from raw crude oil. So you're going to separate heavier and lighter components by heating raw crude oil feeding it into a distillation tower where the cooling occurs. The lighter fractions rise to the top while heavier fractions remain on the bottom layers according to weight and boiling points. Again, we're talking about the fractions, in other words, the hydrocarbon fractions that can be removed from the complex hydrocarbon molecule that is crude oil. The primary fractions that come out of this first process of distillation are things like liquefied petroleum gases or LPGs, naphtha, kerosene, diesel, heavy oils and residual oil. And now we have some other processes that all these will go through, uh, processes like reforming, alkylation, cracking, and coking um, to make additional products that we might need. And here's just kind of an uh, illustration of the distillation column, and you can see off to the right the products that come out simply by heating up the crude oil in this first phase. One of the next phases then is conversion, and this is where they're going to crack the remaining heavy hydrocarbons into lighter ones. You've got thermal cracking where he uh, heat or steam is actually used to break down larger hydrocarbons into smaller ones, or chemical cracking where a specific catalyst is used to speed up the cracking process. The result of the cracking process um, is to create additional gasoline to create jet fuel and diesel fuel. Now again, the overall uh, process of a refinery is to take complex hydrocarbon molecules, break them down, and then reform them into the products that the refinery chooses to market at any one time. Again, the next phase in what we call the conversion process is the reformer. This is where you have heat, pressure, and catalysts that take this, the smaller molecules and combine them back into larger ones. For instance, naphtha, which is a product of the distillation uh, phase, can be turned into gasoline. Another conversion process is that of alkylation. You take some of the lower weight molecules and they're combined using a catalyst to form high octane hydrocarbons for gasoline blending. These are the so-called anti-knocking compounds that are uh, added to gasoline. And then last but not least we have uh, coking which is another conversion process. Coking is where the residual oil the heaviest stuff that comes from the distillation process. It's going to be heated and it's broken down into heavy oil, gasoline, and then naphtha as well. The remaining product then is known as coke. It is used as a fuel source. It's used as iron or smelting. And this is what is in a side of dry, uh, inside of dry cell batteries. And then you have all in one the refining process. You can see here you start off with the raw crude oil. You have the distillation column. Um, the LPGs come off the top. You can see here the naphtha can be sent to the reformer to create gasoline. Then we have the cracking, the alkylation unit, and last but not least, the coking. So all of these together combined 
uh, form the refining process, which then gives us these various products that are going to be sold in places like retail, um, gasoline outlets. But then also there's going to be some of these that are used as feedstocks for the actual production of petrochemicals.